Hi everybody, I want to talk about moment arm, lever arms, and mechanical advantage. A couple terms before we get into the details. A moment is just another word for torque. Now torque represents the amount of force that's needed to get something to rotate about an axis. Now to translate this to something we do every day, almost every day probably, is opening a door. Opening a door requires torque because the door itself is on hinges. The hinge in this example would be the axis of rotation. So the amount of torque or force required to open the door depends on where you actually exert your force on the door. So here's an example of what our hinge is for our door. Here's our door. We have our hinge. Then we have our force when we push on the door and it causes rotation about an axis, which happens to be the hinge. And the door, of course, opens that way. So the moment arm, or often referred to as the lever or lever arm, is the distance between the hinge and where we apply the force in the example. Or, to keep it nonspecific, the moment arm is the distance between the axis of rotation and the point where the force is applied. Now let's apply this to the body. Now all movements in the body are going to be occurring at joints, therefore they're going to require a torque, be it a hinge joint, right, or it doesn't really matter what joint I'm talking about. Flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, adduction, so on and so forth, are all going to require some type of rotational force at a particular joint, therefore it requires some type of torque. Let's apply this to the squat. So to complete the squat, we're going to need extension at the hip and knee joints. Thus, we're going to need force at both of those joints, or we could say a torque, because we're trying to cause rotation at those joints. Now, so the torque or the force must be exerted on the bones that are going to cause these motions. The force comes from the muscles that perform those respective movements. So, I'm going to need a rotational force applied at the knee joint here in order to extend or stand up. What muscle is going to do that? quadriceps, right? I'm going to need a rotational force at the hip joint as well to stand up. Hip extension, what muscles are going to do that or exert that force for me? The hip extensors, glutes and hamstrings. So why do these things called moment arms even matter? Well, they really determine the amount of force required by the muscle to cause movement at a joint. So the amount of force required depends on the length of the moment arm. The moment arm, of course, is the distance between the joint and the load when we're talking about lifting. So the distance between the knee joint and the load itself determines how much work is required by the knee extensors to move. And we have the same thing at the hip joint as well for the hip extensors. So essentially, the amount of force required by the muscles to move a load depends on the joint position. As I said, the distance between the load and the joint. So this is why the, even though the load on the bar is the same during a squat, it's significantly more difficult at the bottom of the squat compared to the top because the distance between the joint and the load is greatest at the bottom of the squat. As we stand up, the position between the joint and the load is reduced. Shorter moment arm, less force required to stand up. Let's look at some other examples of moment arms. So in this situation, we've got two bones. We've got a bone here and a bone here. We're going to cause, cause flexion, so we see muscle attached to the bones. When these muscles shorten, this muscle here shortens, it's going to result in flexion of that joint. Now, we have a load, 20 pounds, and this is where the load is positioned. So by definition, the moment arm is going to be the distance between the joint, which we call the axis of rotation, and the position of the load. So that moment arm determines the amount of force needed to cause flexion, the amount of force needed to overcome that load, which happens to be 20 pounds. So in this example, I've just said the muscle has to produce X amount of force to overcome that load. Now let's look at another example. This has a longer moment arm. So nothing has changed in my setup except the position of the load. The position of the load is much further from the axis of rotation or the joint. So we have a longer moment arm. By simply having a longer moment arm, that muscle will have to produce more force to cause flexion at the joint or more force to overcome that weight. So notice what just happened. We had 20 pounds on the previous slide, 20 pounds on this slide, but the amount of force required by the muscle to lift that load will be very different based on the position of the load relative to the joint. Now I have another example, 
where now I've moved that load much closer to the axis of rotation or much closer to the joint. So we have a shorter moment arm, right? The distance between the joint and the load itself. Therefore, the muscle has to produce less force in this example because there's a shorter moment arm. So if we compare two of the examples, here is a shorter moment arm up at the top and here is a longer moment arm at the bottom. As I said, 20 pounds of force, or sorry, 20 pounds is the load. How much force does the muscle have to exert to overcome the load? Well, it's different. It depends on the relationship between the load and the joint. A longer moment arm will require more muscular force. A shorter moment arm will require less muscular force. And this is why we often use the terms mechanical advantage or mechanical disadvantage. Mechanical because we are using joint biomechanics to put the muscle in an advantage state or a disadvantage state. The advantage state, of course, a shorter moment arm versus a disadvantage state, a longer moment arm. So to summarize, the load was fixed at 20 pounds. The amount of force required to overcome the load was different based on the distance between the load and the joint. When the load was closer to the joint, there was a smaller moment arm and less force was needed. When the load is further from the joint, there's a larger moment arm and more force is needed from the muscle. As I said, this is why we term it mechanical advantage, etc., because we're changing joint mechanics to influence how much force is required by the muscle to move the load. Let's look at a couple other practical applications here. So now we're seeing a deadlift. Now, the load on the bar is obviously the same throughout the entire range of motion. At the start, the distance between the load and the axis of rotation, which in this example is the hip joint, that's all I'm looking at, not the knee, is greatest. You can see the distance between the load and the hip joint here as evidenced by the horizontal yellow line. Therefore, that represents a long moment arm. So the force required by the hip extensors is very, very high. But as the bar comes off the floor, position two, we can see that the hips are now moving closer to the bar because we've had a little bit of hip extension take place. The hips are closer to the bar. Therefore, there's a shorter moment arm and less force required by the hip extensors than was required in position number one. What I've done is I've copied the moment arm from position one, still the yellow line, and there you can see the new moment arm in position number two. So load on the bar is the same, but significantly less work required by the hip extensors in position two because the hips are now closer to the bar. Then we see almost full lockout here. Hips are even closer to the bar less moment arm, less muscle force required to perform any extension from position three to full lockout. So again, load on the bar stayed the same, but the amount of work required by the muscles was different based on how close the hip was to the bar. The joint being, of course, the axis of rotation. Now let's look at the bench press because these types of situations exist in pretty much every exercise. There's always a point in a range of motion where the load is furthest from the joint and then there's a point where it gets closer to the joint and we get into a mechanically advantaged situation where it's easier. So the bottom of the bench press represents the most difficult position for the pecs. What I've represented the moment arm by is the distance between the shoulder joint and essentially the elbow. Now if we had a vertical forearm, then we're going to have the load going pretty much right through the elbow. That's going to be our point for our force. And during the bench press, we're rotating through the, uh, the shoulder joint, horizontal adduction performed by the pec. So at the bottom, we've got our longest moment arm here. As we start to extend the arm and complete the lift, we get a shorter moment arm at the shoulder. And then just before lockout, we get an even shorter moment arm at the shoulder. Now, these ones look pretty close. So what I've done is I've copy and pasted those moment arms onto a line over here. So you can in fact see at the bottom, longest moment arm, as we start to press, it gets shorter and shorter. So what am I saying? Basically the pecs are at their most disadvantaged position, have to produce the most force at the bottom because of the long moment arm. The pecs have to produce less force at the top because they're essentially in a mechanically advantaged position by having the shoulder joint closer to the load. Now we can apply this to the squat as well. So here we see a squat to a bench. At the bottom of the squat here, we're looking at the distance between the knee joint and the load. 
So a long moment arm, as the person stands up, the knee joint becomes closer to the load. So a shorter moment arm. And just before lockout, we see an extremely short moment arm between the knee and the load. And this is why someone can always squat a lot more with a half squat than they will ever be able to perform in a full squat, right? It's simply because the knee ends up being in a more mechanically advantaged situation if you don't go down as deep. Obviously, for a lot of these lifts, we're going to have multiple moment arms, right? So what I've done is I've now taken that squat from the previous slide and I've added in the moment arm at the hip. But as you're going to see, there's not much difference, right? At the bottom of this squat, we see, again, the furthest distance between the hip joint and the load. As the person stands up, the distance between the hip joint and the load is decreased. And just before almost full lockout, the distance between the hip joint and the load is decreased even further. So as the person stands up, there's less work required by the quads. There's less work required by the glutes and hamstrings, the hip extensors, simply because we're having a decreased moment arm. Remember, moment arm is the distance between the force and the axis of rotation or the joint in question. One final example then if we translate this to a setup position, right? The distance between the axis of rotation, which is the hip joint, and the load determines the amount of force required by the hip extensors. So here's a conventional deadlift setup. Hips are fairly high, a pretty horizontal torso. So the hips are far away from the bar. Long moment arm, lots of work required by the hip extensors to perform that lift. But if we can orient the body with a more vertical torso, right, the hips are now closer to the, to the load. This results in a shorter moment arm, in effect a mechanically advantaged position. We've altered our mechanics to lift the load. The shorter moment arm then requires less force of the hip extensors to complete the load. The lift, sorry. Now, just a caveat here before I end, I don't want you to think all of a sudden the sumo is definitely a way to perform and to lift more load because it can allow the hips to, to get closer to the bar, resulting in a mechanical advantage. But that's going to also increase the contribution and the requirements of the quadriceps to the lift while decreasing the requirements of the hip extensors. So it really just depends on personal preference. It also depends on adductors. It depends on mobility. So as I said, you can get a mechanical advantage at the hip via sumo, but it might not always translate into the ability to lift more load.